everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we'll be taking a look at the playoff picture after 9 races trying to predict the playoffs in 2021. We'll be taking a look at championship favorites, breakout drivers finally getting a chance to make a deep playoff run, and maybe even some dark horse picks for the championship that might surprise you towards the end of the season. Without further ado, let's just get right into it. While it was a feel good story, Michael McDowell's fairy tale start to the season ended just as quickly as it began. After getting his first career win at the 500 and grabbing two more top 10s at the Daytona Road Course and at Homestead Miami, McDowell's equipment finally caught up to him. So while in theory, he will have the chance to go for a 2021 title this year, I don't see him making it past the first round. With that being said, expect Front Row Motorsports as a whole to return next year with just as much or even more firepower than they had this year. Christopher Bell has rebounded after a less than impressive 2020 rookie season in the 95 car. Moving to the 20 car at the powerhouse team of Joe Gibbs Racing has lit something up inside the second year driver. He has managed to grab a win and consistently ride around the top 10, sneaking into the top 5 on his stronger tracks. Expect Bell to com comfortably make it to the round of 12 with some big chances of sniping a spot in the second to last round. William Byron is currently the second strongest Hendrick Motorsports driver and no one was expecting it. After grabbing a win at Miami, he has not fallen out of the top 10 in a single race since. Byron should have a clean playoff run, having the chance to be a Dark Horse Championship 4 pick if everything goes according to plan. Don't count the driver the number 24 out. Speaking of Hendrick Motorsports, it's time we talk about the best driver on the team this season so far, Kyle Larson. This guy has shown that he is here to stay and will continue winning races and leading laps, his Vegas win only reinforcing that. Larson is one of my personal Championship 4 picks from what I have seen so far, and I would be surprised if he stops getting results anytime soon. Martin Trix Jr. is currently the only driver this season to be a repeat winner. He seems to have finally adjusted to his new crew chief in James Small and after two impressive victories at Phoenix and Martinsville, he is currently one of the title favorites. Considering he is still leading laps and being there at the end, expect at least one more win from him before the postseason where we will see him succeed just as much. Ryan Blaney finally broke through and won at a mile and a half. Ever since his win, he has been showing flashes of brilliance leading people to believe he will finally start winning multiple races. At the moment, Blaney just needs to focus on closing out race wins and not repeating Martinsville anytime soon. If he manages to avoid these types of situations, he will start being in talks for the title. Even so, Blaney should be around a round of 8 pick and if everything goes right, he shouldn't have any bit of trouble getting there. We all knew Joey Logano would win soon enough based on the start of the season he had, but no one expected him to win that Bristol dirt of all places. With the best average finish of the drivers we have covered so far, I would be shocked not to see Joey November fighting for a title, and maybe even winning if he, if he shows up at Phoenix again, considering he led 143 laps there just a couple of weeks ago. We all love to hate him, but that, at the end of the day, he's still one of the best. While his finishes definitely tell a different story, you need to make one thing clear. Alex Bowman has been one of the fastest Hendrick drivers this season, but he always ends up getting a subpar finish because of some 1 in a million mechanical failure. Lady Luck was finally on his side as he stole a win at Richmond just a couple of days ago. If the streak of bad luck is behind him, I have Alex Bowman being extremely consistent in the playoffs, just like last year. And if he continues winning, the 48 might be back in title contention before you know it. While you are basically guaranteed to be a playoff driver if you win a race, there is a different story to be told for the drivers that are, without a doubt, playoff drivers who simply haven't won yet. The best example I have for this is your current points leader, Denny Hamlin. Considering this guy leads laps every race and is in contention every race, it's kind of mind-blowing to think he hasn't won yet. But make no mistake, Hamlin will win and will win big this season. All he needs to do is to close out the deal at Phoenix and finally claim that elusive title he always seems to choke away. On the other side of the spectrum, we have defending champion Chase Elliott. I don't think anyone was expecting Elliott to be just so mediocre this season, considering how much momentum he was riding in the offseason. His only big chance at a win was at the Daytona Road Course, which was then screwed over by a stupid caution and a choked pit stop. While it's obvious Elliott will win this season, it's not clear when and how much he will win. Don't be surprised if Chase ends up playing a goose egg and missing the championship for him. Joining Elliott in the surprising corner of mediocrity, we have Kyle Busch. It's obvious the lack of practice in qualifying has hurt Kyle Busch a lot last season, and this year is no different. Being paired with a new crew chief in Baby Shore doesn't help either. While things might be looking bleak for KFP, there are still plenty of opportunities for him to turn everything around. The biggest one being Nashville. Just like Elliott, a championship for appearance doesn't seem likely. 
Brad Keselowski had a great start to the season, but just like Bowman, he's always at the wrong place at the wrong time and he gets screwed over by a dumb block or a dumb pit call. Considering Brad doesn't have a ride for next year, he will be driving with a mission, so don't count him out on going for his second career championship this season. For a driver of his caliber, he should not settle for anything less than a round of 8 appearance. While we still have a lot of playoff 40 drivers left, the last one we'll be covering in depth is Kevin Harvick. Coming off an insane 9-win season in 2020, it's surprising to see Harvick turn into a top 10 driver with the occasional top 5. It's common knowledge that Stuart House equipment has taken many steps back this season. While this has affected Kevin a significant amount, he's still doing better than his teammates considering Harvick is the only SHR driver in playoff contention. While I'm sure he will win at least once this season, don't expect too deep of a run from the driver of the number 4. As one last thing before we end this video off, I'll be showing you guys the complete playoff field, the drivers that barely missed the playoffs, and the drivers that were in the playoffs last year that will miss it this year. After that, I'll also be making my 2021 champion predictions. And for the moment you've all been waiting for, in my opinion, the 2021 NASCAR Cup Series champion will be Denny Hamlin, driver of the number 11, Toyota Camry. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you uh, agree with my takes here. If you have anything else you would like to add or if you have a different take, please let me know in the comments. I'll be more than happy to reply to it and talk to you guys about it. And uh, I would really appreciate if you guys would subscribe. I'm very close to um, 100 subscribers. at at least at the rate I've been growing at lately. So go ahead and uh, if you like this video, go ahead and subscribe. That will really help me a lot. And I'll see you guys in the next video.